I think we've chosen to lead with this as our first panel test because it really expands on an established excellence within the laboratory around hereditary colorectal cancers. Steve Thibodeau started the laboratory about 25 years ago, and one of the first tests offered within the lab were a series of tests that address hereditary non-polyposis-related colorectal cancer. Those colorectal cancers are largely due to defects in mismatch repair. And so we had a nice test menu already established within the laboratory. This panel approach is really an expansion of those classical colorectal cancer genes, trying to be more comprehensive. The technology nowadays allows us to do large screening panels like this for the cost of maybe one or two Sanger sequencing genes. This is really important because when we look at the overall incidence of colorectal cancer in the United States, about 30% of those have either a single gene mutation associated with them or a hereditary component. This hereditary component is difficult to understand right now. We don't know if it really is due to a specific single gene mutation. Perhaps they're misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed hereditary cases. And tapping into that population with a panel test, such as the one we've created here, might further delineate that boundary between single gene colon cancer disease and this more nebulous, quote unquote, hereditary disease. So when we built the gene panel here at the Mayo Clinic, we actually combed the literature for any evidence that a gene was linked to a hereditary colorectal cancer disorder. And by doing that, we created a large pool of genes that could potentially be on our panel for, uh, for testing. We then created a five-tier approach that ranked the evidence in the literature to say that we have strong evidence that this gene is associated with a hereditary colorectal cancer, or that there is just emerging evidence that this gene is associated with a hereditary colorectal cancer. And by reviewing the literature and passing it amongst our peers, we were able to classify genes with either well-established support or just emerging support. And based upon that review, we decided to include some of the classical genes, some of the strongly emerging genes, but then saving some that are more experimental for perhaps a later date.